so I'd like to call the meeting to order. Charles, would you like to serve? Sure. As, um, I'll, I'll point you um, in place of one of the many openings we have. Um, we do not have a public hearing tonight. There is no old business. So we move on to item five, new business. Let's see the new applications. We have one application. It was from Kevin Kowalski for approval silt of a fire pond in front of the residents of 8 and 9 Cricket Lane will be for uh, your next meeting in two weeks. All right, so moving on to item 6, general commission business, approval of minutes for January 16th, regular meeting. Um, does anyone have any corrections? If not, we'll file them as they are. Um, Simsbury Meadows. You have, a, I have a legal opinion today from Bob D. I know this is it's related to the uh, request that was sent to the first selectman on the application of, uh, of pesticides and specifically mosquito control at the Performing Arts Center. Uh, this is, I, I just received it this afternoon. So um, Bob is saying to you, um, you have the, it would be in your role to determine uh, the operators, the PAC, could request a declaratory ruling from the commission on whether an application for mosquito control material is required. Um, and he cites statute on what, whether, he not really given it, uh, an opinion on it, whether it's exempt, but uh, cites the general statutes 22A40 subsection A1 uh, concerning exemptions for activities under uh, DEP uh, mosquito control. So I, I have not, I didn't get a chance to speak to Bob to this opinion. This is just emailed me today. Um, so. um, the DEEP does, in the shoreline areas, a great deal of mosquito control work. Mm -hmm. um, I will read this again more carefully, but it seems to me a stretch to suggest that that the PAC is operating under the authority of the DEEP uh, in Simsbury Meadow when it sprays down there. So that is it. The director was supposed to be here tonight. He had a last minute conflict come up, so he will not be here tonight. Um, I will not be here in, in uh, the first week of mo March. I have asked that he cover the meeting, and maybe that would be a more convenient night to come before the board and have a workshop. Uh, unfortunately, I have a family obligation uh, the first couple, uh, basically first seven days of the month of March. So, and I apologize, I can't make, I will not be here at this evening. Did, um, did the, uh, did the pack, I said the pack wasn't copied on this letter, but, his, his rec recommendation was that the PAC seeks a declaratory ruling, but has anybody informed them? No, well, like I told you, I just received the yeah. opinion today, so what I will do, the, the Performing Arts Center actually has a new d executive director. We just met her last week, so I will share this with her and kind of have a, let's have a, a, a meet and greet and go over some of the concerns that are there. The commission is on record in writing with the PAC and the first selectman that it is the commission's view that a permit is required or a determination by the commission that a permit is not required. Either way, the ball is in the, the discretion lies with the commission on this question. Mm -hmm. That's in writing with them. So mm -hmm. we're, we're covered in that regard. Before the meeting, um, we were we were discussing that this also brings up an interesting idea. What What about other people that are using pesticides near water um, so you know this would it might expand that as well things like golf courses or the town um, in areas near near culverts and you know adjacent to waterways if you want to expand madam chairman fertilizers are chemical are material as absolutely. well as pesticides absolutely and the timing of those applications are germane and I dare say they would have 
more impact on the wetlands than some of the other applications that we see before us. All right. So, so next, the next meeting in March. Be a month from, so it'll be the month. first meeting in March. First meeting in March, okay. So, and once again, I apologize, I will not be there. Be I would like to state in the record that the staff is entitled to a personal life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be at home with uh, covering mother. Yes. All right. Um, so moving on to item three, the forest management discussion and workshop. Um, but, hold, hold on a second. I, so what are we actually doing about this letter, the, 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 the opinion? So are we, are we actively going out and talking to the Performing Arts Center? Are we waiting for them to come talk to us? Are we going to ignore it for a while and see what happens? So I, I, I just wasn't clear on what we're going to do about this. I read it as saying that they may come to us for a determination as to whether we think they are exempt from the need for a permit. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. So we're waiting for them to come to us. Yes, but they are on notice that it is our view that they may not spray without hearing from us, without dealing with us first. And since as this is a new executive director, we think that they understand that message. That's one of the things we're going to find out next. I, I just met her in the past okay. seven days, so. Okay. Okay. Um, I, like I said, I just received this opinion today, so sure. I haven't been able even to okay. send it out in fairness to them. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I just, I just wanted to know what the plan no. was. I wasn't clear on it. Right. Sorry. All right. So moving on to item three, forest management discussion and workshop. We continue that discussion. Um, we were asking ourselves to clarify the goals and, and language that we wanted to eventually send to the um, the Board of Selectmen. Um, I see we have public here today. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Um, I, hello. hello. I'm sorry, I, my little device is not here tonight. That's okay, Michael. I, um, I just wanted to mention one thing to you and ask um, you to save the date of April 26th. It's a Thursday. Um, we are working on our next forum and we will have a formal announcement ready for it and you'll get your uh, copy individually. But just for now, if you could save the date of April 26th, uh, we will be at the library again, probably at 6 in the evening, and I'll be sure that you get the details within. Um, a couple of weeks. You want to say the topic or the topic? That's what I'm uh, You're working say on. That. And okay. It's almost ready, but it's not official, so I have to um, edit it and so forth. And so I want to be sure you get the the edited copy. All right. um, but it'll be forthcoming. All right. And I don't know the date, but I know that the um, Canton Land Trust is having a program on um, the forest management for bird populations. So I thought that might be of interest to the group. I don't know the date, but I think we went online. Um, anyone else? Yes. Hey, uh, Scott Riley, I'm on Griffin Street, and I was here for the first meeting, or my first meeting, last meeting. And I was glad to see the discussion that went on, and I just want to put in kind of a plug for, I guess, the precautionary principle, and just doing as little as is necessary and sometimes that's hard. Sometimes it's, you look at something and obviously nature's not always neat and clean and doesn't maybe doesn't look the best. But you know, we're talking about forests that's set aside as wildland, I guess. I don't know exactly what the designation is, but uh, it's a plug for doing as little as you is is absolutely necessary. Obviously there's times like for safety, you know, if there's a tree or you know branch overhanging a trail or something like that obviously that's something that needs to be taken care of but um, really it's just do as little as you as is absolutely necessary and um, the other point I would make is not there's some discussion about um, cutting some trees and getting some revenue from that to do some other things and some of that is a little bit circular to me and I think 
that shouldn't be really a consideration in the decision of what you do for the land. That's that's just something I would throw out there. Thank you. Yes. Yes, uh, Judy Schaefer. Uh, I think two days ago, I mean, uh, there was an article in the Hartford Current about the stress that the forests are under presently. I thought that was very timely. So I don't know how many people read it, but it was concerning. It was Sunday's paper. I oh, was it Sunday's? I think it was Sunday's paper. No? Monday, I think. Monday? Monday? You're right. Yeah. Monday. It was front page on mm -hmm. Monday. You're right. You know what the, it was called? The article was called? Do you know what the article was called? <laughs> no. I'll say that you get a copy. Thank you. Because I get the newspaper online, so what I can do is go in and uh, forward a copy to you. The gist of the article, Madam Chairman, was that climate change is, is, having a, is being found to have a profound effect on forests in our region. Uh, and that uh, familiar species like the sugar maple uh, and the red spruce in particular were mentioned, and maybe some others, may not be with us very much longer. Uh, that uh, a combination of the, the, the changing circumstance of the temperature, um, a, a more erratic uh, precipitation pattern, uh, and also um, Pestilence of one kind or another, Eric Cameron, Eric Cameron was, talk, was quoted on, on that subject, is really changing what we should expect to be the population of the forest rather, rather uh, remarkably. Thank you. And I was about to plant some red spruce. So <laughs> 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 right. um, anyone else have anything to say? Yeah, hi. Um, I just wanted to share with everybody from the, the Board of Selectmen's uh, perspective, while when we do go into the forest sometimes to, to I'm not going to say clear it, but, but to open it up, we do typically try to get some uh, reimbursement for the lumber, but it's really all of my experience going back to what's it been, five years now I've been on the board, has not been this is a money maker. It's really de minimis of amount of money, but it's to get a couple of bucks in. It, it definitely is not. Um, all of my experience has been it's not driving the, the decision to, to do the project. It's to get a little bit in, but you still end up, the town ends up paying for it. Yeah, yeah. it was interesting, the discussion last time when Jerry Toner was here was saying that, you know, that had been something that had been put forward in the RFP to the person who was writing the RFP. So, you know, there was, a, I mean, you get the sense when the RFP was written that that was a consideration. It, it's in there, and from my perspective, if you don't ask for a nickel, you're going to get nothing. Yeah. So you might as well ask for a nickel, <clears throat> get a little bit, but, um, and, and frankly, even though the price of wood is up, what you're getting paid for it, is not going up. No, and it, 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 you know, the type of removal was not a, a big area, but it was individual trees, but then again, you know, it didn't help that they were called crop trees in the... In yes, the that, that is a rather poor choice of Poor, poor choice of words, yes. So, just wanted to share that with the commission. And which, uh, which really didn't tell you what kind of trees they were. Um, uh, let's see. Mike, you very kindly went and researched um, the deeds for the various properties. Yes. Uh, I, I, I did the research on Belden Forest, uh, Darling Hills property, Onion Mountain, uh, Onion Mountain Park, Stratton Brook Forest, and Ethel Walker Woods. I, I attached just a quick summary from their de the deeds and the fiscal deeds for all these properties in a report. I have an extra one if anyone would like it. Um, along with maps of the which properties based on the um, town's GIS system. Uh, just one thing that popped out uh, was the Belden Forest. There was some interesting restrictions on that deed. Um, and the commission may want to look at that. It's on the second page uh, of the, the correspondence dated January 22nd. Um, the 
the, the two that really is the, the property will be maintained in a heavily wooded condition as in present um, and excluded above. That was they granted life, life uh, use of the properties granted to Anna Guinevere McLean and Joseph Pomeroy Hendrick to take some wood uh, up to five cords of firewood and 4,000 feet of lumber suitable for boards from the property. Um, no trees upon the property shall be cut down except may be required in good standard for forestation. Um, thought it was a little interesting to find that that was not noted in some of the other documents we have and um, went through the other properties. I don't want to go through all the details. I attached the deeds. The one prop, one property that you should look at too is the Ethel Walker Woods. There is a lot of agreements between the school and the town and an understanding also of a forestry management plan. Um, I attached both the conservation easement for the town owned property and the conservation easement for the school just because they relate to each other. Um, one is a, 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 a document dated, I believe it's 2007. The other, and it's the last deeds attached to your uh, to this correspondence. The other one is a 2010 uh, deed. It's just for information, but it maybe it it could assist you in in formulating your goals. And I know there's been quite a discussion on why the properties were preserved or why they were taken for open space. Um, it it kind of without having a commission file to, you know, obviously the 1946 acquisition of Belden Forest, uh, we don't have a file that would say, but we have a deed that kind of illustrates why that property came to a ownership of the town. If there's any questions, I'm here to answer. It's interesting reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, the words conservation and recreation came out and I think it just about every one of them. Mm. And I thought that would assist you in your goals and philosophy, having that information, since these were all related. I tried to focus on the ones that were that we had forestry plans for, just so that we can, can almost compare the two. I was also interested in good standard of forestation. I mean, that's sort of a moving target. And sure, but, but 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 none of that's different from what we've been talking about. No, no, no. But I mean, this was written back then, 1946. So yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but it's, it's 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 the it's all consistent with you know what we've been saying, and the, there should be you know there shouldn't be haphazard. There should be a plan. Yeah. Yes, and um, I know it's been brought to me that the. Um, it, whether it's management or maintenance, whether we want to maintain the forest as they are, or, or you know, we've got you know forest maintenance on it. Um, so I'm, I want to apologize. I have had a couple of family emergencies this week, so I haven't written anything down. So you know, have you? If anyone well, else has, I've got some comments Go on, on last week's meeting, if I may. I'm. I'm sorry that the flu prevented my attending yes. uh, at the last meeting. I did watch it later on the community television uh, website, and I do have a few comments. Uh, <clears throat> first, I'd like to correct some mis misconceptions about the Onion Mountain plan <clears throat> that I think might have arisen from the last meeting. Uh, the chairman said that in contrast to the state's plan for Masako State Forest, the Onion Mountain plan was deficient because it seemed not to take account of the Halloween snowstorm of 2011. Uh, in fact, tree damage from that and other storms is dealt with on page 13. Very now, good. my pagination is different than yours. Uh, subtract a few from, from that, because I've got the, the longer copy. Um, and in support of her apparent contention that the Onion Mountain plan is all about cutting trees to sell timber, the chairman said that the plan keeps referring to trees as crop trees, uh, evidently suggesting that, like sugar beets or some such, uh, they're grown only to be harvested. In fact, I think only two pages, again, pagination is off, but 26 and 41, contain the word crop. And it's always in the context of thinning to release crop slash mast trees. Now, mast trees, as we, as we all know, I think, are trees that provide nuts and berries and seeds and such to benefit wildlife. But what are crop trees? Well, here's a publication from the Ohio State University called Crop Tree Management. 
a tool to help you achieve your woodland goals. And it says, if I may quote, crop trees are trees that produce or have the potential to produce the desired landowner benefits. If, for example, improved squirrel habitat is desired, a large crowned white oak that produces abundant acorns would be a valuable crop tree. On the other hand, if fall color is important, a group of black gum trees, which turn brilliant red in the fall, might all be potential crop trees. In an unmanaged woodland, competition among trees for light, water, and nutrients is often severe and can result in slow growth or even death of the more desirable trees. In a woodland under crop tree management, these crop trees are freed from excessive competition by reducing or eliminating some of the less desirable competing trees. The released crop trees are healthier and more vigorous, more insect and disease resistant, grow faster, and produce additional landowner benefits. So it's not about harvesting the best trees, it's about improving forest health by giving them a leg up on competition. So that's, the first, that's my first uh, point. Second, I'd like, as Mike did, to talk about money. Um, at the meeting before last, there was a lot of talk about money coming from the sale of trees cut under the plan. So I wrote to the forester and asked him how his plan might be different if he did not have to finance it through the sale of cut trees. He replied in writing, and I sent his reply to Mr. Glidden, who in turn emailed it to each of the commissioners, and as well put it in the, the uh, packets for the document, documents uh, for the meeting that I missed. And the forester wrote uh, that the plan really wouldn't change. Um, there's a tree here or a tree there that he might rethink, but he wrote, and I quote, the reasons trees were marked to be removed were either to open up growing space for residual adjacent trees, to release regeneration, to promote regeneration by creating new gaps, or to remove damaged and diseased trees. That's it. The money part is somewhat coincidental and is a fortunate and useful byproduct of doing what we're trying to do. So as Mike said, it's not a motivation. Um, it's a byproduct of, uh, of the effort to uh, enhance the forest health. Um, so now it seems to me that, that one could, in good faith, reach the conclusion that the management practices prescribed in the Onion Mountain Plan were not needed to achieve the stated goals. From my own study of forest ecology and my experience as a woodland owner, I, I don't reach that conclusion, but I admit that somebody else could. That is, however, different than suggesting that the plan is only about cutting trees to sell forest products. To take that position is to say that the plan is a sham and its author a liar. It would mislead the public and defame the honesty and professional reputation of a good man, and I don't think the commission should be a party to that. Don, I think that's going kind of a little far. Saying that, um, that there might be some interest in getting a crop tree. Now, there is no definition in the Onion Mountain Plan. As to, I'm not impugning the forester. Good, they, I didn't he, say you were. I think you just did, and point of... I, um, point of personal privilege. I don't think that's really what we're all about here, Don. I don't. I, However, I, um, when the, the management plan said crop trees, it did not do what you have just done, say what they want to do, what, you know, what that crop tree was for, whether it, it was for squirrels or birds or whatever. Um, there are many different reasons to maybe remove a tree. But the, what I take, um, what I find confusing in the Onion Mountain Plan is it doesn't say why it is doing it. It doesn't say it's for squirrels. It doesn't say it for birds. It doesn't say why it's being removed. And that's where I think this plan could be strengthened. There's lots of good information in the Onion Mountain Plan, but it doesn't say what, what species it's trying to uh, promote. Having diseased trees, um, ones that have insect damage, is actually very beneficial to a lot of different species. So what I'm saying is in the Onion Mountain, um, despite what I think you said that I said, the Onion Mountain plan could be improved to specify what we are doing it for. Just to say improve forest health, I don't think, for what, I, it, it, exactly how? I don't get that from the plan. I understand. The third point I wanted to make was that 37 minutes into the broadcast of the, of the meeting, the chairman is focused on the Onion Mountain Plan's eighth goal, to generate periodic income. 
from the sale of forest products. And Commissioner Morrison is trying to suggest that the prior seven goals are also important. Now, the chairman says that those goals are, her term, lovely, and that they are, her term, laudable. Her only problem, she says, is that she does not see them reflected in the plan. Ladies and gentlemen, those lovely and laudable goals <coughs> are the very ones that the chairman denounced weeks and months ago as inadequate, vague, useless, written in words whose definitions she did not know. And it was because of the purported inadequacies of those very goals that she launched the commission on the seemingly endless quest of replacement goals. The quest is now, one would think, uh, no longer needed as those original goals have been anointed as lovely and laudable. This commissioner, you may judge, is frustrated and frankly mystified as to what the chairman's agenda has been. The chairman's remarks at the last meeting suggests that she has concluded that the active management of Onion Mountain is not needed or desired and that nature alone can do what needs to be done. I think those words are pretty clear uh, when you look at the tape. And if that's the chairman's conclusion, I urge her to put us out of our misery by offering a motion that the commission thanks the Open Space Committee for its referral, advises the Open Space Committee that the commission's view is that the practices advocated by the Onion Mountain Management Plan are not needed or desired and the plan should be set aside. I will not myself vote for such a motion, but that's okay. I've been outvoted before. <laughs> but I think it's time we move on. That would be lovely. I thought also, since we did have public audience who was also commenting on these plans, it was also the desire of this commission to listen to public audience, to get their input, and there has been considerable input from the public, that the Onion Mountain Plan is inadequate. It does not state what the goals are. It does say forest health, and it does have very terse goals, but it does not, it says to improve wildlife. It does not specify what kind of wildlife. As seen in the Masako Plan, which is done by the state, they actually identify um, what species they are trying to improve the forest for. The Onion Mountain Plan does not do that. So I think we need to discuss the plan. I, do, I agree with you, this is interminable. It has also become adversarial, which I don't understand, because what we are trying to do is, as a collective group, come forward with a better plan for the town. There is no urgency in this. I do agree that it is dragged on, but the, uh, the attempt here has been to get some sort of understanding on our part as to what we want to do and what the public wants to do. do and if it takes time to do so, so be it. There is no urgency. We, we will recommend to the, we, I would recommend that we recommend to the town that the Onion Mountain is a good start, but it, is, it does not specify what we are managing the, the, the forest for. Do I misunderstand your, your, your view, Madam Chairman? Because I, I did judge from the, the watching it on TV that you, you really did say that nature could just do it. Is that not your conclusion about Onion Mountain? N nature always will do it, whether, whether we're here to do it or not. The, desire, the question is, what do we, are we managing the forest for? Are we managing it for woodpeckers? Are we managing it for woodcock? Are we managing it for squirrels? What are we managing it for? I think one implication that could be taken from the Hartford Current article that was mentioned is that it's such a changing dynamic in coming years that you're ill-advised to try to manage for one species. You should, as Commissioner Morrison was trying to say last week, manage to create habitat which is supportive of a variety of species. Well, that's why I would like, to, um, I'm, I'm curious to attend the meeting at the, the Canton Land Trust where um, uh, uh, there's a gentleman who has been studying bird populations in woodlands and seeing how forests are managed for those different populations. Change is the only thing that we can be certain of. We could have a hurricane come through next year and this management plan would be moot. Um, it doesn't matter what, you know, what we do. Nature will, in the end, decide what's going to happen to that forest. The Asian longhorn beetle could come and decimate our forest population. There are all sorts of things to do. But the, before we go in and do anything, and it will be of concern to the public, it seems reasonable to have, even if it's lengthy and tedious,
to have a discussion as to what we're doing. Not just take one management plan and say, yes, this is a very good management plan. It's a lovely management plan. And I do use the word lovely all the time, Don. It is one of my fallback words. I'm sorry if you don't well, like it's it. It's a splendid word. It's a it's splendid word. It's the but inconsistency when one between says, rejecting these goals months ago. I am ago. not rejecting them. I was saying they weren't, they weren't adequate. It's not, it, they, 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 we were trying to flesh them out. They weren't actionable. They weren't actionable. They were, they were, they were pan gloss. They were good, but they weren't, you couldn't do anything with them. Um, when you say that you're going to do more desirable or less desirable trees, desirable for what? It, well, it, I think the distinction becomes between the goals and the tactics again. And I think, so I, I guess, Don, you know, from my perspective, the last few meetings, well, I think that they've been, you know, long. Um, I think we've, you know, it's the tactics. You, you made a great case for why, you know, we could come, you know, the current forestry plan would come in and could take out some trees to help the state of the forest. And you could get, I think, a wide agreement that people want to, you know, um, to make sure the state of the forest is, um, you know, is as healthy as possible. But the disagreement becomes at whether that's the right way to do it or should you leave it by itself to do it. And I don't think we're, we're ever going in this forum to understand those level of tactics. The question is, is can we get to an answer by which we describe uh, you know, what we think our goals are. I think a bunch, almost all the ones we've been talking about have been reflected in these maps. But get something back to the board of selectmen that allows them to move forward. And, the que and, and I think from everything I've heard from everybody, we're very close on that. Um, because I think what we said in the very beginning was that, no, that none of these individual plans, whatever they are, should be taken by themselves. They should be thought of as a context. We had a we had basically had a discussion about how they, that should be done, and we also came back and said the goals that have been written in here are very consistent with our sets of goals. These are the goals that we should be sort of planning to, and they're independent of how we do this. Given these things, we should then go and talk about how we do it in each of these places. But it shouldn't be just look at Onion Mountain by itself. It should be looked at within the wider context. The question is is whether that's close enough you know, in some way, shape, or form to send that back as a recommendation to the board or that we have to do something else at this level. Because I don't think we're going to be able to come up with an answer with just the people here mm -hmm. about what the best tactics are to do it, to do, to improve the forest health in any one of these parcels. And that was also something that we discussed at the last meeting, that perhaps we need to widen the circle of people that are involved in this decision, that it's not just up to us. It would be very easy for us to say, it's a, love, it's, a, it's a lovely plan, as I say. It's a lovely plan. Let's go for it. But there are people that would like to see something added to the plan, other further discussions added to the plan, and it behooves us to take our time to do it and do it well, however tedious it may be. Well, is, there, is there not a profound chasm between the two points of view, the point of view that favors active management and the, the point of view that dismisses it? No, I don't think there's a, a huge chasm. I think it requires discussion and it, it, it requires education on all of our parts to decide what do we mean. We, we started off this discussion, but what do we mean by active management? There are all sorts of different, we, we, we're using terms that not all of us are agreeing on um, I, that's what these, these things were, these discussions were, was so that we, we, we don't have anything else before us. We don't have any applications for us. It's not like it's taking up our time. This is an important issue. These are, these are lands that the town has paid for, that people are, in the deeds they say they want recreation and conservation. So what exactly does that mean? But, but, but I, I think, so I, I do understand Don's concern yeah. a little bit about, uh, about, you know, we don't need to retread this stuff. We need to be able to. We need to be able to come up with some discussion to send it back to help move forward. Because yes. I, I do think that early on we said, look, on these kinds of discussions, you know, if just if we just zero in on Onion Mountain and we have these some disease trees that we want to take out that will help the forest, that's a very specific question mm -hmm. that you can get a lot of input on. Yeah. Should we do that or not? And then. If you come back with that answer, you can say how you might apply it to other people. We are not going to solve that here. 
There's no amount of discussion that's going to do that. We can help by getting you know, other people to come in and ask and answer some of these questions, but it's still going to be uh, information. I'm kind of with Don in that I think we've heard an awful lot. We ought to be able to frame this up. And so where I was actually headed was I wanted, I was thinking we're at the point where we could actually talk about what an interim report would be going back to the board. Yeah. Should it be at just a few pages long? I think that's what we were supposed to do. I was going to. Well, well, I think it was. I think you'd ask, you'd asked about some goals. Yeah. And but I'm actually jumping over because I think yeah. we've got that. Because I'm kind of with Don, and I think we need to. No, I think we were at the last meeting. We wanted to write up something the, that we could then send to the, 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 right. the selectmen. And and I I didn't do my job. I either. didn't do my job either. And, I had but, but, lots of but, medical emergencies. I didn't get it done. But that's where we need to okay. go. Okay. So so I think if we can take. So, you know, so I, I guess the question would be if we kind of agree that that's where we're headed, yeah. what kind of discussion can we have today to help us along that road? And I think Don's got the right goal here is we got it, we, we, you know, we've got a lot of information. We've got to figure out how to get it back and make the next set actionable. And it might be that the next step is that we need more, I need a, a, a broader group of people to make this decision, not just us. And we, we need to, um, take into account the public input that we've had that they want to see, I would like to see in the Onion Mountain Plan and all of the plans, information as to why exactly we're doing what we're doing. What species are we benefiting? What, Even though it's complicated, these things can change. But, but so, so if... But I'd like to see that specified. What are we, are we, you know, are we benefiting woodpeckers? Are we benefiting the, I, you know, I, what? I, th I think originally we were claiming that we would look at all the parcels, you know, from a town-wide perspective, come up with those with, with that list of sort of, I'll call it the tactical things that we're trying to do at the time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but the goals that we've been describing are high-level goals that we kind of think are general no matter how they're independent of those tactics and of discussion. So I think the question from what you're asking is how do you get information out of here to mm -hmm. a place where you can have a discussion about just those items? Mm -hmm. Where you can talk about whether it makes sense here to have act really active or makes sense to have really passive in these parcels because we're trying to achieve some set of tactical goals. So how do we how do we do this? Because we, I think I think we'd like to be at the end of this thing. We sure would. Pretty soon. I mean I, want, I don't well, want to put words in Don's of, mouth, but I, I mean, I'm kind of with Don, and I would like to get this thing Well, we don't resolved. really want to talk about this every single meeting. No. No. It would be nice to forward on to the selectmen, I think, that we have reviewed the management plans, mm -hmm. and while they contain much good information, they don't specify what our goals are for the management. You said enhance for us health. That's good, but for what? And it, and in the in the woodland goals that that you you talked about for the crop trees, um, it says landowner benefits. The benefits that I see in the deeds were for recreation and conservation. That that's that's different. I mean, we want to see some trails through those people can enjoy the woods, and we don't want the trees falling down on them. That's 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 good. Um, I do think, Don, that nature does know how to manage a forest. Um, it does it in a slower process than we do, um, but that's all right. There's time. Um, can, I, can I suggest that um, going back to Charles's point, I think the um, uh, the uh, I think where we where we need to be is is a letter to the rep, to the yes. board of selectmen yes. mm -hmm. with um, and instead of saying that the um, that the draft plan is inadequate, I think that we should say that it is a good starting point That's for a forest management plan and we have the following comments on this management plan and we can and we you know and then we can have several you know several several sections discussing the the conversations that we've had here so, so that's why i think it's worthwhile well so, so as well so jim that, that that's interesting but that's a little bit different from what we were talking about several weeks ago and i'm not i'm not sure that that's bad but several weeks ago we were basically making the claim that any of these management plans which are kind of good inventories of each individual parcels that 
what we what we really want the the town to do is to think about these from a broader perspective. They they shouldn't they they should use these things as inventories and to help what's possible there, but they need to assess some of these stronger goals. They need to get a they need to get a lot of public participation um, because you know it's unclear that all these pieces need to be treated the same. Um, there's no reason to think that they all need trail, you know, need new trails or new markers or new parking lots. And then you might, at the end, go down into, at the very end, some details about this particular plant that you want to go to. But the bigger picture, I thought, was treat this whole thing, you know, treat as a whole. Here are the main goals that we should be planning for on our, on our management. And these things are great things to start with, but they, you can't really act, you can't really take any of them and act and and use them as an action plan now because you haven't done this other step. And I thought that was the message that we were kind of headed towards. But you're thinking something a little bit different, and that's fine. I'm just wondering if that's what we should be doing, getting very specific about this particular plan. No, I, I, maybe I wasn't envisioning something yeah. so specific. But Okay. okay. Um, but, but, but I think it could come at the end. Like, like I, I would like to do that. Say, here's an example. We're looking at this one. You've asked us to talk about this one. This is the one we see. Here's some of the issues, but this is why we think you've got to, you know, you know, you've got to do something from a broader perspective. Here's the philosophy that you should be thinking about, and and here's the main goals. And I, so I'm thinking this whole thing can be three to four pages. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be much more than that, and you can have some details about the report, maybe a couple other pages, but it doesn't need to be much more. I mean, I think back, you know, the Belden Forest one talks about cutting trees and then having the laydown area for the trees is becomes a parking lot for the, well, I mean, but, I just don't but, see that that's, well, you know, those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah, there but are that, problems yeah. with each of the plans when we look at them individually. What you're saying is we need to look at them as a, as a, as a, as the overall goal. Yeah, but those are just tactics within the plan. Yeah. Uh, well. Charles, if I'm understanding you, I, I think you're, 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 you're saying that you really need to think about not these few parcels that have pl plans or draft plans, but the broader sample of all of the town's wooded open space, mm -hmm. whether it be town owned or maybe beyond that to what the land trust owns or somebody else. That may be a lovely theoretical goal, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's, honestly, I didn't at the time and I don't now think that it's practical uh, to do that. I don't think you, you will ever have the resources to bring empirical data on all of those properties together. Oh, so, so, so okay, so let's, let's take a step back. I don't think you have to have all that information to, be act, to act on an individual plan. I just think that you need to be able to come back and say, in order for you to say, I want to take the Onion Mountain plan and enact it, you should have been able to say, how does the Onion Mountain plan, as is, fit into our broader plan for the overall town? What are the things that we're locally managing for? Is it to, if it happens to be for woodpeckers in Onion Mountain, it's because we know that that's a good thing to, to plan for. And then you can execute on this. How do you reach that conclusion, though, without doing work on all those other properties? I, I, th I, think, <clears throat> I, think, I think what you have to do is to say, um, for instance, we have four major forest plans that we're looking at. You've just got to go through the step of saying, are these all consistent with what our main goals are? Can you write up the goals? And then can you come back and say, okay, if our goals are to, you know, from a town-wide plan is to have more trails in, in let's say, Belden and more, a more natural system in Onion Mountain, then we will adopt our, our local plan so these things could be supported. Because in this particular system, I keep touching the rules, but I'm thinking about the Onion Mountain map, there were lots of ways you could go, right? There was more trail maintenance or less. There was taking, you know, you know, and they basically all the forest maps had that same thing. You could install more parking lots or less. So the question is, is why would you execute on the Onion Mountain plan before you had thought about the other ones as well? Now, I'm not saying that you can't, I don't see anything actionable in the Onion Mountain plan right now. I mean, you would have to go through, and before you would decide to take these trees to improve the health, 
you would really want to get an idea from the science, is that really the best way to go? So I don't, I don't, I don't, th I mean, one of our conclusions could be, and this might be kind of where Jim was headed, that of the action items we, we need to resolve, and two of them came up, what are we going to do about invasive species, what are we going to do about disease trees, and maybe those need to be addressed before we do anything on Onion, on Onion Mountain. And, and that has to be addressed at a town level. I don't know how you do the invasive species stuff without thinking about it at that level. So I think those are some of my issues. But I don't think you need, I don't think we need to know everything about all the town in order to start to execute. But I'm not sure I would, I'm not sure I've heard from the public so far anybody thinking that we should execute one of these things individually until we've th thought about them as a group. What do you, what will you learn from thinking about invasive plants on a town-wide scale mm -hmm. that would cause you to make a different judgment about the action plan that's in here uh, at Onion Mountain regarding invasive plants? I could say something about that. It seems interesting to consider removing the burning bush on Onion Mountain. I mean, uh, when up and down West Mountain Road, there are lots of burning bush. I mean, it's sort of a, it's a sort of rolling the, the rock up the hill only to have it roll back down again. Um, it, it, there, perhaps the town should have a, a, you know, a public information about the impacts of burning bush or whatever plant that is the problem on a town-wide basis and encourage people to remove them from their own yards as well as from the public thing. It's the only way we're going to actually do any, any good. Otherwise, it's just a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's an action item that doesn't really get us to where we want to go. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't attack any invasive plants because it no, wasn't being done. No, I didn't say that, Don. I said it, it might be more successful if while we're doing one thing, we are doing another thing as well, um, to to hit it on many different fronts. Just doing one thing and then figuring that's the one that's going to do it is. To, I don't think it's going to be successful. It, we might end up spending a lot of town money and effort removing something only to have them come back just so, as vigorously. So, so, so Don, I, I would have answered the question a little bit differently. I, I would have said that, you know, what I could learn if I think about all the invasive species and I'm thinking about the resources needed, we might, if you came back and looked at it from a town and said, you know, for, from the town's perspective, what it can control and what the costs are, these might be the top three things we might do, then when I was going back to Onion Mountain Plan and we say, well, you know, we're trying to debate between how active a management we want, we might then say, in here, of the three things we think are the most important, there are, there's one here, so maybe we would do that more. So I, I, I guess, I guess I don't, I don't want to get into the point where we're into an infinite loop of trying to gather information. But, but I think it needs to be sort of at a higher level, just making sure that the things that we're doing at these local parcels are consistent. And I think one of the things that we've been doing, and one of the things we can learn from a little bit here, it's taken this group a while to come down with the, the you know, where these different things fall into. What is it? Is it a goal? Is it a philosophy? Is it a tactic? And we're trying to get down to the actual tactics of what do we do on your mountain. I'm hoping it took it took us this long that if you go to a bigger group, it's going to take even longer. So how can we help get the group to do, to go to to get to that point of being able to do something with Onion Mountain? So I'm going to turn around and ask you a question, which is: Given where we are with Onion Mountain report right now, what do you think we should be doing at Onion Mountain? What I think we should do at Onion Mountain <coughs> is to reaffirm our approval of the plan and attach to it three suggestions. Okay. The first, that um, the forester, that making note of the fact that the inventory that was done was done by now a few years yeah. ago, yeah. the forester be asked to uh, resurvey, if you will, reconsider his markings. Um, revise them as might be needed or might be desired um, with a particular view to looking for opportunities to uh, uh, foster the development of old growth characteristics here and there 
as he goes uh, through that work. Um, second, that the forester be asked to, um, in presuming the plan is executed, to do it in a way that minimizes soil disturbance, uh, whether by the timing of the work, by the use of a log forwarder versus a skitter, uh, or by other tactics that would uh, minimize the, uh, the soil uh, disturbance in the work. And the third suggestion would be that the Board of Selectmen be reminded that the reason that this didn't go forward last time was that they attached to the uh, request for bids to get the work done the stipulation that there be no work on the weekend. And it was found that that stipulation was inconsistent with market practices and therefore the, 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 the bidding failed and the work never got done. So our, our suggestion would be that such a stipulation not be included if the Board of Selectmen in its wisdom chose to go forward. Don, did you find in the, um, the Indian Mountain Plan that um, there wasn't sufficient um, consideration of the soil disturbance issue? Um, that the, it didn't really say that the, when the timing was for the work and... I, I don't recall seeing it, Marjorie, and that's why I made this additional yeah, suggestion. Because because that's that's one of the things in the, the goals that was, um, you know, one of the, one of the eight goals, it did specify um, preservation of thing. I know, I think it was in Onion Mountain, didn't they sp specify the scarification of a certain area so to promote the growth of oh, for aspen Austin. trees? Yes. yes. And that's when a different I, story, I, different case. That is. But um, it also goes to the you know, the soil disturbance issue, how you do it and when you do it. And all I'm rest. not sure that log forwarders were in wide use even as uh, relatively recently as when the original plan was, was done. Yeah, but, that, but what I'm saying is, you know, we have, and that's really what I meant when I was saying that some of the goals that were stated were not really highlighted in the plan. So soil, that was one of the things that if we'd gotten into the tactics of the various, of the particular plans, you know, I would have said that, you know, there was no consideration of the soil, you know, stabilization or the soil disturbance was not really addressed in the management plan. So even though it was laudably and lovely in the goal section, it really wasn't in the plan. I, I can't say. I, I didn't go back and look for I, it specifically. I did. I didn't see anything about that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sometimes not, I mean, any time you go into forestry, I mean, depend, you, know, you can do it in the wintertime, it's better, and you can, but, you know, you'll always run the risk of doing soil disturbance with, with logging. Now, it depends on the scale of the logging and the equipment you use and the timing and all the rest. Well, you I will have noted that. in the, the written response we got from Eric, Mm -hmm. that he said that the work that he did last fall, I think, using log forwarding technology, uh, you, at this point you couldn't even see where they had no, been in the no, forest. No, so there's it, it can the, be done, it can be done, but it wasn't specified particularly. Yeah. So um, that answers your question, Charles. That's what I would do if it were up to me. Just, just a quick question, uh, maybe just fall on Don's, Don's comment. Do you also think the bond amount that the logger posts should be higher I think it was only two thousand dollars for ENS issues. I, I would leave that to somebody with your expertise. I don't know. Yeah. No. 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 I'm just. I'm, yeah. If you're sending those recommendations, it, you know, I would say in this size disturbance, minimum five thousand um, dollars, just for incidental, because probably it would be logged in the winter or in frozen ground conditions, yes. so we wouldn't be able to assess anything till spring very likely that individual now moves on to the next project, whatever. So, and, and at least my experience in forest uh, timber harvest, larger timber harvest than this, um, it becomes the ENS issues show up at the end of the project when the next growing season starts. So I would add that as a fourth suggestion, that, that careful consideration be given to the size of the bond. So, but also when, I would also add, that when, when the, um, you know, going back for the forest inventory, I would like to see in any of the management plans or maintenance plans or whatever, the consideration as to what's, because it does say in one of the goals, um, uh, promoting songbirds and wildlife and all the rest, which songbirds, which, which species, what are we going for? Because it does matter how you do it as to which species you're going to imitate. And that was something that I saw in the Masako um, plantation, um, the Masako forest management plan, because they did specify which species they were trying to manage for. 
whether they, you know, things change and they may not end up that way, but at least to know what we're doing it for, I think would be, a, a, um, and I think that a forester would be able to say, you know, which which trees are more more desirable, you know, they say more desirable, but for what? I don't like just, when, when they use the word more desirable, less desirable, for what? I think that it, that is missing in the in the management plans as they stand, but it certainly could be corrected. I think we disagree about that because I I I, I, I hold to the view that there is enough change going on. You know, the, the, the songbirds have changed remarkably in just the last few years. Uh, I I think one one can foster habitat that is usable by a number of species, um, and and it can be more useful. You know. I've only seen one chickadee all year this year. That's, there's been a remarkable change in chickadees. Yeah, the COVID, the, I've seen lots. Um, the you know there are there are, you know seasonal, you know annual, um, decadal changes. That, I mean you're absolutely right. It does change. However, I would still like to see because it is mentioned that it wants you know but this is done for something. Um, is it for the, you know, what type of birds? Is it for the thicket birds, the forest birds, the which, you know, there are certain groups of birds that you, you can manage forests for. I, I, think the, um, I, I think the problem with managing it that way is that it, it, it requires some sort of follow-up and, and constant evaluation of those specific species, whereas if you manage for habitat, you know, and your goal is to, well, for are. example, for example, if, you're, if, your whole, if your goal is to create, you know, snags and trees of varying height and other types of varied habitat, you know, you can have a plan and you have a, you know, a forester who goes into an area and manipulates the, the area and creates such habitat and you can know that your, your, your habitat has been created, right? This, what, what I just said, the forest birds, the deep forest birds, the thicket birds, the, you know, the, the shrub birds, uh, the, those, those are what I'm saying. But we're not getting that in the management plan. I, and, and I, I mean, if it comes down, I, uh, to be honest, I mean, if it comes down to a question of which species we I'm not prefer talking, to, I, I'm talking about the types of species. Are we are we going for the ones that eat the old dead trees? Are we going for the the ones that live in the deep woods? Are we going those those are things? Are we managing for old growth? Are we managing for um, a younger forest? What are what are we exactly doing? There there are groups. You're managing for a habitat. I mm -hmm. thoroughly agree. That particular habitat has a suite of birds to for it. You just can't say songbirds. Well, no, I, I mean, I think you don't want to have, I mean, I think what you don't want to have is a, you know, a strand, stand of trees that are all the exact same height and provide the exact same habitat. And that may be very good for some very specific animals. I think, I think it's pretty clear that what you want is a diversity of habitat in the forest. Which gets us to the landscape issue, because you can, you can have a diversity on a landscape issue, if not necessarily in one particular forest. You could have a complete stand... Um, of you know a, a certain kinds of tree of you know reasonable age um, in one area of a forest and in over in another part of landscape you can have a completely different type of forest because the soils are different and all the rest then you have diversity over the landscape you don't have to have you know one of each in one particular I think we talked about this last time anyways why don't we take a stab at doing the letter to the thing we'll take into account some of your considerations and 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 Charles, we'll see if we can't come up with a letter for next time mm -hmm. um, and move on from there. Unless we want to discuss this anymore tonight. Yes, Mike. I don't want to stir the pot. Oh, gosh. Um, but <laughs> please do. I really appreciate everybody caring so much <coughs> to invest so much time in this. A couple thoughts I had. Um, I had not even thought about what Mike handed out tonight with all the conservation easements and I'm going to call them restrictions on the different parcels. From very much a layman's perspective, they're different for the different parcels. Mm -hmm. I am almost thinking uh, to set a range we can go from here to here to do nothing to this gentleman's viewpoint to a more maybe not the extent of what they have in California where all the uh, forest walks are paved per se, but, but something like that 
for the different things, and I would even be willing to, um, so probably get me in trouble, but be an advocate for should we get any revenue from the forestry plans to put it back in to do some inventory mm -hmm. and stuff to do that in some kind of format. Um, I think kind of knowing what you've got and now we've got the money for it because let's be honest it does come down to money to be able to do stuff. You know, free work is usually not yeah, <laughs> it's and better if you pay for it, but, but I, I'm kind of putting that out there. I'm not trying to muck up where you guys are yeah. going because you're doing a you're getting to a good place. You really are. And and I think we we had this discussion last time um, about the money because it really doesn't come down to a whole lot of money from the from the forestry. It's, but it's, it's a lot more than nothing. It, it's <laughs> more than nothing. But we also discussed you know um, grants. I mean they're hard to come by. They're harder and harder. But but still and all. I mean there 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 are various you know and and should this even be a, you know a, a recommendation that we make to the to the selectmen that I know there are a lot of different things that need to be paid for, um, but if we can't, um, you know, it might be something that the town needs to put in a line item. I mean, we have we have budgets for our parks. I mean, this if these are recreational areas, there should be a budget for the trail maintenance and things like that. Perhaps without, you know, always thinking that if we, you know, remove some trees, which could be for sale, but even though the market's not very good, as you say, that it might be something that the town needs to think about as a line item. I think it does need to be in there forward looking. And it's a suggestion we could make. Well, and, and, and frankly, and we, we it. had it in last year's budget till yeah. everything went to heck exactly. and basket. Exactly. Um, but the point is to not lose those funds, much like the uh, open space funds from the Planning Commission, mm -hmm. that those dollars are going to a specific mm -hmm. use. The same kind of designation for these kind of things. And, and, and that's really where I'm trying to get to. And not so much getting caught up. There, there are different kinds of parcels in town, different, be they old growth or new growth or, or whatever, just kind of giving that range so people can understand that. And perhaps, I, mean, I know with Build and Forest, I mean, it just needs new markings and, you know, a little, little maintenance. It doesn't really need a lot. The trails are there. Well, to, to, to that end, very honestly, um, the town Usually, Culture Park and Rec have Eagle Scouts that come in. That's it. Constantly looking yep. for projects. That's it. And uh, I actually heard today about an Eagle uh, project that was done up at uh, Holcomb Farm. Yeah. They did trail markings yeah. and everything yeah. else. One so at Roaring that Park. kind of yeah. stuff can, can, can be done. Yeah. You just got to be <laughs> on the lookout for it. Well, something. you also have to identify that the need is there. And that, I know that's the, the situation at the Nature Center where we have. Eagle Scouts doing all sorts of different things, but we have to have a backlog of projects for them because there's nothing worse than, than an Eagle Scout coming to you and it's like, I can't think of anything for you to do. Yeah. Um, that's waste. You know. So, yeah. So, I don't right. want to stop you guys. And no. you Thank you. Helen. May I? Thank yes. you for allowing me. Um, and I don't think uh, Mike is stirring the pot. I don't think any of us are trying to stir the pot. What we're trying to do is um, entertain different points of view everybody has one but we're also trying to allow um, um, growth in our discussions so, so just give me a moment and I'm talking on my feet I don't have prepared comments but my perspective has always been that I bring an historical pr uh, perspective to the question here what Mike is talking about I mean I could tell you how many arguments I've had about why the money doesn't go into a special fund. It's gone into the general fund. So, you know, we all have uh, issues, but I would like to sort of respond to what I've heard all of you say, and then ask you to remember what I have said before, and that is that I look at this, that you have been given the job of being a caretaker, and you receive the job openly, willingly, whatever, you talk about the perspective of having only a few people address it. Charlie brought up the point of maybe having more people uh, address it. That's why we look to the people in the public sector to, let's say, interject. I was encouraged when I found out that the one position that is still open for the Open Space Committee um, has had a number of applications come forward. I mean a big number. And I 
that, that was encouraging in itself to say, we've got a lot of people in this community who, who want to be part of this discussion. And so I, again, would like to reflect on what I have brought into this discussion, and that is the use of words, the use of our, we don't have the definitions in front of us. When you're a caretaker, you really have to understand what you're talking about. When you're talking about a forest management plan and its individual goals, that's one thing. When you're talking about stewardship and maintenance, it's another bigger picture. And Charlie's comments about, you know, and I have said it before, I think, you have to date four specific plans and they are rather, they're more than three years old, they're four or five years old. That's not so important as to say, what do they tell us? There's good information, you've acknowledged that. But there's also missing information and you've acknowledged that. So I'm not looking to impede anything happening actively going forward. I'm here to say, we yet don't know which of those major forest sections. We don't know them well enough to say that Onion Mountain is the one to receive this kind of active management. What if we're doing it to the wrong mountain? We don't know what we have. I don't say that I, as a layperson, understand completely about species. I would look to someone else to help me with that. But I would like to say, as a layperson, but as a committed person to this whole subject, um, that going forward, it would not be detrimental to say to the Board of Selectmen, we've reviewed this, we have questions, send it forward and say, we have questions. You're not saying no, no. or yes. You're just sending it forward with open agenda, so to speak. In the same picture, what I think you need to send forward is just one statement or one comment about all these wonderful discussions you've had about talking about the general goals and say we are developing some policy goals. That's what I was saying to you in my letter the last meeting that that's where the error took place. Mm. That you as caretakers received this particular, let's say, um, responsibility, but something was missing as it came to you. And that's why I was suggesting this is a wonderful time to take a step backward, get the new members in place, get your new members in place, and if we could perhaps let the Open Space Committee, because it now has a number of people interested, if we could then, let's say, have some subcommittee, a little one from each, let's say, to really address that policy question that was missing before it came to you as caretakers. And just one more final comment. We talk about management, and we yet haven't decided that what we really were talking about from the outset, when these management plans were even produced was the issue of maintenance and it fell to the parks and rec as a maintenance issue and then we developed this feeling that we now have to do something to these lands because we now own them and we've got to do something to them and I'm just being cautious to say unless we understand from the deed work that Mike has done from the, uh, the, the, the work that Don has worked so hard on for the last number of years, the inventory, we have a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I just think as caretakers, we haven't had the opportunity to really look at all of that information, to develop our overall goals, to talk about how we're going to be the stewards. All of the other stuff that you have interjected into your conversations is the next step. 
So I'm just imploring you not to feel uh, the frustration. Yeah, we're frustrated, but that's what happens when you have differing points of view, and that's what happens when you have these discussions. And I think the opportunity is here for us to find a way out of this frustration. So I'm encouraged. I mean, you, uh, you've done so much good groundwork, and I think what it has to ha what has to happen is if I can, you know, you'll hear from me, okay? <laughs> and that is that I think we need to open up the discussion and find some way to involve the Open Space Committee, which was historically presuming to be part of this discussion and see if we can get back to that, because the Board of Selectmen can do that. It's in the language. You can give us any job you want to. You can oh, really? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. You can redefine the, the per Yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of ways that we can accomplish this. So I'm just trying to say, yes, frustration, but that's okay. Out of this frustration, I think we're heading in the right direction. So thank you for letting me sort of reiterate my thinking. Thank you, Helen. Anyone else? I, I mean, I think, I think one of the things that comes out of this, and I think Don's raising a good point, is the question is, is we have to be very sure what new information is going to, is going to get us. You know, if you had the new information, how would it change your decisions? And, and I, I think, Don, you know, from, if I was going back to what you were describing about this plan, you think that if you were to change, had a couple of these recommendations about how you might foster old growth characters, et cetera, that this would be a good representation of what um, sort of a medium management plan would be to achieve the goals. You know, we're coming and we're going to do certain things, but our goals are to improve the habitat. These goals have been listed down, and this is an action item that would do this. And so once the forester comes back with some of these recommendations, that stands up as one way we could do that. And if we're trying to get information, we could then take a look at that and say, well, how might you improve that or change that at a, at a lower level? Talking to different foresters to achieve the common go goals, which I think have, are all the seven goals that were in that, in that system. Is that how you're sort of thinking about it? And you're not thinking that there's much more information that would change at least this, th this definition of this plan, but there might be information on how to achieve it a different way. You know, that might, that might be the thing that we could actually have as an action item to figure out these two different ways of doing the same thing. I'm not sure I've understood the question okay. entirely, Charles, because it seems to me that the forester is a kind of scientist who deals with these sorts of data all the time, mm -hmm. and what he's given us is the outcome of the, his, the application of his scientific knowledge to this parcel. Right. Now, you could get another forester to do it and maybe get a somewhat different answer, but if I, if I understood you to, be, to say, you know, do you take this plan and then, then get some other foresters to think of other ways to do it, I'm not sure that... that oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure it's other foresters, but we have heard a lot of discussion over the last several times that what some of the constraints of this plan are that the more echo... I'm not saying... No. It, not the ecology, but the, yeah, the, the forest ecologists haven't really weighed in, and there's been a lot of changes in forestry management that might make certain ways this thing was being executed to achieve these goals we all agree on might change that. You've already gave some suggestions here about, you know, how might things change if you're trying to get to more old growth forest, and that's a question back to the, to the forester. And so the only reason I'm bringing this up is I really do think that one of the action items is that we've kind of zeroed in on this particular plan as a good example of what a, a typical forestry plan might be with some of these things. And it kind of falls into this, I don't think it's really hard over active management. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's there. I, it's, it's definitely not leave it alone. It's someplace in the middle. And I think almost all the debates we've been having are between the someplace in the middle and the leaving it alone. <laughs> and, and, if, and if one of our goals is to be able to, to frame it up as here's one point, then it maybe allows us to go out and get some other opinions about how this would be different. That might be an action item that we ask open space to do. That's right. And it could be, it would be nice to get another opinion mm -hmm. uh, from not just a forester, but a forest ecologist. And I know foresters 
do study forest ecology. So it may be no different, but it'd be nice to get the reassurance from another perspective to see, yes, this would be a good way to go because ultimately we have to explain this to the public who is very devoted to these woods and we want to be able to say we've looked at all the angles and we think this is the best plan. So I think taking the time now will save us a lot, you know, headache down because people do get very upset when you chop down trees. I'm not saying that you shouldn't chop down trees. Gosh, we've got an awful lot of trees. Um, but we need to have a rationale for, you know, selling it to the public. So, um, so let's let's come up with a letter. I okay. will. I, hopefully, my mother won't fall again. She won't have glaucoma surgery, and she won't have it all in one week. Um, so I'll be able to write a letter. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, and we'll we'll all work on it and try to get okay. a consensus from this board to, to make to the to the board of selectmen. Okay. All right. Now, item number four. Forestry plan. <laughs> <laughs> You have a request from Mr. Harder. Unfortunately, he's not here this evening. At least, let's see him here. Um, you have the documents that he submitted in your packet again. The obviously he will be. There's some crossings that are in uh, mapped wetland soils because it's a activity within uh, wetland soils uh, in a regulated area. At least. And I can't really tell based on the map. That's really why I wanted him to come here to clarify whether um, he is working in wetlands and that he'll have best management practices in place uh, to get a determination as an as of right activity pursuant to your regs. And that was explained to Mr. Harder now three times. Um, so I guess the, the, the staff would like to know the commission, you can act on his request without his input tonight. Or would you like me to draft a letter at your direction to uh, request his presence in two weeks? And maybe that will uh, send him a message to come in in that, you know, we, you have to go through this process. We've, it's we've not a permitting process. No. It's just a determination is as of right. That's all. And it's, this is, this is, I've had similar dealings in another community I, I would uh, I would favor that we send the gentleman a letter suggesting that uh, re reminding him that the determination of whether it's an as of right activity is within the province of the Commission and that uh, we won't make that determination yet because we don't have adequate information without his input okay. I, 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 you like that I think that's it's good. perfect Thank you. I didn't want to send anything out till the commission agreed. Thank you. Yes, we don't. We don't. The applicant doesn't get to determine that. Yeah, I'm sorry. No. We're not, yeah. um, we've had issues with that before. All right. Um, adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. All in favor. Aye. All right. Thank you very much.